Hi, I'm Janet Riley, and I'm with Troop 209 in Silver Spring, Maryland, just outside Washington, D.C. I'm also a Wood Badge candidate, and I'm working on a project to help troops be more welcoming to scouts with autism, Asperger's, and other sensory issues and social issues. And there's nobody more expert in this area than Dr. Temple Grandin, professor of animal welfare at Colorado State University and one of the world's most accomplished autistic people. So Temple, I'd like to ask you a few questions. Can you explain for us what's the difference between autism and Asperger's? It's just a matter of severity. In Asperger's, there's no speech delay. In autism, you have a speech delay. But it's all part of one big, broad spectrum. And one of the main features of the autism spectrum is being socially awkward and having problems with sensory things like loud noises hurting the ears. Some kids can't stand fluorescent lights. Others, like me, absolutely hate scratchy, itchy clothes. Well. I know that the outdoors have been a huge part of your life. How, can the, how did the outdoors help you become the accomplished woman that you are, and how can they help scouts with autism and Asperger's? Well, when I was a young kid, I loved to do things outside, fly my kites, model airplanes, things like this. And uh, scouts is a great activity for uh, kids on the spectrum. I know a number of kids that have achieved Eagle Scout, and it gave them a great feeling of achievement. And uh, getting a PhD was hard. I just want to tell all the you potential scouts out there that if I could get a PhD, you certainly be able to get Eagle Scout. And I think scouting is just a really good activity for kids on the spectrum because they thrive on structure and getting the badges and kind of going up all these different steps. I know many parents have come to me and said they're, they're a child that's been on the autism spectrum or maybe the ADHD kid or a kid with some other label, dyslexia or whatever, has done really well in scouting. But you gotta find the right troop that sure. has a leader that understands. Okay, well you've taught me that you can turn a disability into an ability. What abilities might autistic scouts bring to a troop that could really benefit that troop? Well, I'm a visual thinker, so I'm very good at inventing and building things. That'd be useful on, you know, for a, a scout troop. Also, there's others that are good at mathematics, and you do a lot of navigation things in scouts. They'd be good at that. Okay. Also, people on the spectrum have really big memory. They can learn a lot of facts, be very, very knowledgeable. Great. So they can keep our budgets, build our tents, do the pioneering, build wooden structures and things like that. That's huh? right. Okay. What merit badges might interest them from that list? Well, I was really big into photography. Uh -huh. uh, that would be one. I was very good at uh, building things. How about animal science? We have a merit badge in animal science. I think that's just wonderful that you've got a merit badge in animal science because that's my field. Okay. What accommodations should a troop be prepared to make to help an autistic scout or scout with Asperger's truly succeed? You need to understand the sensory problems, sound sensitivity, you know, some event with a lot of loud noise the scout might have problems with, but he's going to handle it better if he can initiate the noise. Let's say you're going to a gymnasium that's really noisy. Um, if he can control how much exposure he gets to that, gradually build up tolerance. Uh, some kids have problems with fluorescent lighting. One of the big ones is scratchy, itchy clothes. There's no way you're going to get wool against my skin. Another principle is no surprises. You know, if you have a change in routine, let them know beforehand so it's not a surprise because surprises tend to cause panic. So is it good to phase these scouts in, like doing camping in the backyard, for example, to get them acclimated to what sensory experiences they might have when we go off into the woods? I think that's absolutely excellent because oftentimes a kid on the spectrum does better with kind of a gradual transition. So he learns how to set up the tent, spend some time in it, then spend the night in the backyard. That'd be a really, really good way to get him used to camping so he'll really like it. You mentioned that sometimes clothing can pose sensory issues for some kids with Asperger's and autism. Um, do we need to be more flexible with our uniforms because sometimes the badges might be a little itchy or scratchy and some of our pants actually zip off at the knee and you can feel these zippers on the insides. Well I think it'd be a good idea to get some pants that don't have uh, zippers at the knees. Now the shirt that you have on looks like it's soft, that that shouldn't be a problem. And when it comes to sewing on badges, uh, don't use that stiff nylon thread. Just use cotton thread and then there shouldn't be any problem with that. I know you like to see kids spend their time in productive activities. So let me give you a choice. If you could see boys and girls in front of uh, video games or joining either the Boy Scouts or the Girl Scouts, what would you pick? Well, I'd like to see them in scouting. I mean, kids need to learn how to do activities with other people. And that's something a lot of kids are not learning enough of that today. And that's a work skill they're going to need when they grow up. So what's your final message to our scouts with autism, Asperger's, and other sensory issues? If I can get my PhD, you can get your Eagle Scout.
Temple, I want to thank you for sharing your knowledge and insights with us. It's going to help us be prepared to welcome many scouts with sensory issues into our troops. Well, we're also going to need a lot more scout leaders like you who are really understanding of just some of the little accommodations that need to be made to help a kid really succeed.